Welcome to this cage volume uh, drawing uh, tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to basically show you how to do cage volume. Here's an example of a lying figure that I did. And uh, basically, uh, that's one. And then here's another one of a standing figure. And there's a lot of diagonal lines there and some extra detail. But the idea here is that you have that continuous line that basically uh, folds through and creates the actual sort of cage-like structure. And so I'm going to do it with this very complicated figure here. And um, yeah, it's going to be very challenging. So I kind of start from the head. And I did this a couple times. Each time I kind of drew the proportions a little bit bigger in the image. This is actually very common when you're working from photographs or even from the model itself. You can uh, draw either too big or too small based on proportions. And so the head ended up being a little bigger. And Eventually, I, I did a slight cheat. I actually uh, freeze transformed and resized the entire figure in Photoshop. But that's not like a, a serious cheat in terms of the process of cage volume, right? So the cage volume process is still working here. The idea here is a continuous line. And I, I jump around every once in a while here. You can see I'm kind of breaking down the eyes and sort of looking at the uh, structure of the face. And the pencil kind of like moves around. And this is recorded in Photoshop, so my uh, touch sensitivity is sometimes is a little heavy-handed. So I actually did have to use an eraser tool. But if you do draw with a, um, a light pencil or a very light pressure on an ink on paper, you will have the ability to just press harder, you know, for the next line. And um, what I should have done is drop the opacity, and I would have essentially had that ability to happen in here. But um, yeah, you can see here, um, I'm just sort of thinking or as I'm drawing along. And this is all in real time. Eventually here, it's going to speed up quite a bit. But um, I want you to see kind of like the first marks. Uh, typically in the figure, a lot of people tend to draw the heads first. Now, I could have drawn the entire shape of the head. But I decided to sort of focus on the eyes and then, you know, basically kind of move around. And I do stop occasionally. So it's not always a continuous line. You can see there I'm trying to draw like an eyebrow. Um, and so I jump around in this process. But the idea here is, again, you try and, try and draw as much as possible a continuous line. As you can see here with the hair, I'm sort of looping around and uh, grouping uh, bigger chunks of the hair as I loop around. And um, mentally what's going on here is I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about proportions. I'm noticing the eyes way off the left eye versus the right eye. And the only thing I ended up doing was I ended up basically shading in darker in the area and, um, you know, basically kind of bringing it closer would have helped a little better. But, um, you know, if I would have drawn a little bit lighter, I might have done that. So here I am giving my first attempt at drawing the hand. And it's really weird to do it this way where I, I start out with the hand first. Usually I would uh, draw out the structure of the arm and then the hand. But I what I was noticing here was the negative space between the hand and the hair. And I was kind of enjoying looking at that shape and trying to capture that, that negative space and just challenge myself by drawing from negative space rather than drawing my usual way of uh, connecting from the bigger parts to smaller parts. So. Uh, there's uh, you know some strategies for both working both ways, but here you can see I've drawn a little bit lighter, and I'm exploring the lines and kind of you know redrawing in certain areas and uh, changing the lines. The nice thing about not erasing, even when I erase, however, I, I do leave the lines at a very light mark. So I just wanted to point out that when you're drawing, you want to make sure you leave the lines there as a guide to work from. So you don't ever want to uh, completely erase them totally because then the, then you essentially have done is it's uh, the analogy I always use is it's basically like writing a, a paper. Um, you do a first draft and then a uh, second draft, and a third draft possibly, and then the final draft. And um, if you basically just erase it all, it's essentially like throwing away the complete draft and starting from scratch. So you have no lines, no words, no structure to to guide you from, and that that's kind of pointless. So what you want to do is make sure you have those lines and just leave them, but leave them lighter and then sort of build towards dark or more confident lines as you go along. The other thing I'm noticing is, is this image is a little bit difficult to see. 
So it is dark and I am trying to see some of the information on the inside. But um, you'll, you'll find later on that once it goes into faster here in just about uh, just another minute here, um, I eventually find my spots, you know, my sort of key parts. But you can see here now the arm, I noticed it was too short, so I drew the elbow out a little bit further out. And I keep doing that. And that's the reason why is because of that negative shape between the arm and the, the, the right lower leg. I'm noticing that shape there and I'm looking at the distance from there to there and also comparing that from like the chest area of her, her stance which is a, a crouching pose and it is a very complicated pose. Now I'm noticing on the right arm is way off it needs to come over. So the cool thing about cage volume is it's a very exploratory kind of drawing and so you can change things as you go and so what I found out was you need to use some you know resize it here. Here's the resize I was talking about before. But what I end up doing here is I just erase a little bit and then go back in and, you know, sort of redraw that arm a little bit. Now we are uh, sped up here in terms of um, the timeline. So it is going a little bit faster. So you can see here I'm erasing, but again, leaving those ghostly lines there to kind of give me a guide to work from. And then I just start drawing in. The other thing that's a little bit harder here is I didn't rotate the canvas in any way. And so I was kind of fighting that as I was drawing because I want to record this so you can see the entire image, uh, you know, vertically in the correct position with the um, uh, resource, the actual photo that you can see and compare the two as you're going along here. But it is a, it is a struggle to draw that way. Uh, you typically, you want to rotate to maximize the, your drawing strokes based upon your your hand, how your direction of the hand. So here I am going in the, the left foot and basically, you know, really exploring the shoe, the structure of the shoe. You can definitely see a more continuous line here. You know, as I whip around, everything's kind of continuous. Again, kind of imagining that this figure is like a giant wireframe. And it's a little bit tricky in the beginning to kind of figure this out. Once you have kind of practice it though, uh, this idea of like a continuous line, you just draw the lines through the lines. So you don't, and the lines in any particular part. So for example, the, the right leg, you notice I have drawn directly through the uh, right arm completely, you know, be, even though the right arm is blocking the view of part of the leg there. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I just drawing straight through. And any artist that, that wants to draw more accurate, they do this all the time because they wanna make sure the proportions are correct and um, everything's looking, looking all right. The final end piece here could be, you know, worked on a little bit more. I definitely sped up my workflow in terms of drawing here. This was an early attempt and it was definitely a lot faster. If I would have slowed things down and maybe sped up the video even more, we would have a more accurate, you know, uh, quality of in terms of the, the drawing of the figure. But I think overall, considering how complex the figure is, it came out, it came out all right in the, in the end here. I did change a lot of things as I went along here. So here you can see I'm adding just more lines, kind of exploring. But again, each line is kind of continuous. They kind of connect and or overlap the lines. Uh, rarely is it just short little lines. You know, here at the bottom, I redrew the base and then kind of added back in. And then I decided, well, nope, it's a little bit thicker there. And so that, again, you can kind of see all my decisions as I'm drawing along here. The knuckles here need to come down further. Then I noticed that the handle with the sword, uh, again, looking at that negative space between the sword and the, and the left leg, or sorry, the right leg, uh, the handle need to come down further. And so what needs to happen is the knuckles need to come down further. And that's essentially what happened there. So uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, quick little tutorial on cage volume. Again, this idea of a continuous wrapping line you know, um, it's it's very similar in a lot of ways to cross contour, you know, except that it is, a, instead of just a wrapping line that defines the form, it actually goes all the way around completely. So, um, yeah, uh, this will pretty much wrap it up here. In just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the audio recording, and you can kind of enjoy looking at the video here. Until next time, uh, see you soon. Cheers.